I call this our first meeting of the year 2023 to order. At this time, we'll stand for our invocation and for our pledge of allegiance. To our wonderful creator, we thank you for another opportunity. We thank you for this new year of 2023. We thank you for the opportunity to serve your people. We ask that you would come into our meeting, guide our hearts and our minds, that whatever we do will be done solely for the purpose of serving the citizens of Florence, that the city of Florence will be a greater place to live and a better neighbor to all those around us. So we welcome you into this meeting to have your way. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council, when we look at our agenda here, I will ask for a motion to approve our December the 12th, 2022 regular meeting minutes. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second in discussion. Hearing and all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed like sign. At this time, Council, if there's no objections, I would like to move our agenda items of introduction of resolutions to position right now so that we can do the the notification to the public and also greet our guests and give the young people opportunity to receive this their resolution and be able to go back to school. If there are no objections, we will move our resolutions forward to this time. Hearing none, at this time no objections. Our first resolution that we have is resolution number 2023-01. It's a resolution to congratulate the South Florence Bruins for winning the 2022 South Carolina Football State Championship. And I'm going to ask that our Deputy City Manager, Scotty Davis, please read that resolution for us. Thank you, Mayor. Resolution number 2023-01, a resolution to congratulate the South Florence Bruins for winning the 2022 South Carolina Football State Championship. Whereas the South Florence varsity football team defeated Northwestern 57 to 30 on December 3rd, 2022 in Columbia, South Carolina at the Charlie W. Johnson Stadium, earning them the title of Class 4A South Carolina Football State Champions. And whereas this is the Bruins first football state championship in program history and the first football championship won by a Florence School one since Wilson won in Class 3A in 2007. And whereas the Bruins tackled their competition throughout the season, becoming Region 6-4A champions, city champions, and lower state champions before ultimately claiming the state championship title. And whereas led by head coach Drew Marlowe, the South Florence Bruins finished the season undefeated with 15 wins. And whereas through hard work and determination, these student athletes have proven themselves state champions and are role models for area youth. And whereas this winning season is a great source of pride for the players, coaches, students, alumni, supporters of Bruin Athletics, Florence School District 1 staff and administration, and the Florence community. Now therefore be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Florence, South Carolina commends this tremendous athletic accomplishment and congratulates the South Florence Bruins for winning the 2022 South Carolina Football State Championship. Resolved this ninth day of January, 2023. Approved James, James W. Peterson, City Attorney, Teresa Myers Irvin, Mayor, and Casey Seymour, Municipal Clerk. And at this time, I'm gonna receive that resolution. Superintendent, will you please join as well? And I believe I'm going to ask everyone, please introduce yourself and then we'll proceed to this. Okay. You go first. Yes, sir. Richard Malley, Superintendent, 
Cody Slaughter, athletic director, South Forest High School. team in the state. So congratulations with, for what y'all done on and off the field. Very proud of you. Do any other member of the council want to make a statement? If not, once again, congratulations. I want to say I was there when y'all beat West Florence. <laughs> <laughs> I was there when they beat Wilson. <laughs> but, I, but I can also say that um, your player, Joe, who's on the team, that is ex my husband cousin. So that's why I say when we were one Florence, we were one Florence because pretty well everyone has someone at one of the high school that's either a relative or a friend. So I have a family member who serves on your football team. And I'm so proud of you because I believe that as an athlete, athletics teaches you discipline. You become disciplined. And I'm pretty sure with the history that you have, there's no way you could have won 15 games without discipline on and off that field. So once again, congratulations. We're so proud of you, and we continue to expect great things for you and even your future academic and sports career. Thank you, and child superintendent. Thank you for what you're doing to support the athletic program and athletic director. Congratulations, and thank you as well. They just had the Hall of Fame um, induction back with this Saturday, and it had representation from South Florence in great numbers. So once again, congratulations. And any other if not, thank you once again. And I, I, I think, uh, Madam Mayor, um, it's the coach in me I have to say. So, sure. <laughs> uh -huh. congratulations, guys! What a season! Uh, Fifteen and zero takes a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication um, to see the city uh, surround you guys into a state championship. I was actually on the, uh, that Wilson State Championship team in two thousand seven, but to see your season to break school records to be uh, fifteen and zero. Speaks a true testament of what you guys have done. So congratulations to you guys, to the alumni, um, and also to your parents, man, who, who got you there for as far, and who have really shown your true support. Uh, to Dr. O'Malley and the school board for the enhancements that they have done to um, grow you guys into the young men and the student athletes that you are. Um, we wish you well in your future endeavors, and again, congratulations on being the 4A state champions of South Carolina. Thank you. And at this time, when well, we went right into the resolution, I'm going to call for a vote for both resolutions, number 2023 and 0-1, and resolution number 2023 um, 2 so We have a motion and a second. Second. In discussion, hearing none, all those favor of those resolutions, please say aye. 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 So at this time, we will proceed. We have the resolution number 2023. We're going to ask that um, Councilman Jabeli please read that proclamation. 
a resolution and present it. It'd be my pleasure. Thank you. This is resolution 2023-02, a resolution to proclaim the week of January 29 through February 4, 2023, as Catholic Schools Week in the city of Florence. Whereas St. Anthony Catholic School has educated many young people in the Florence community that have become successful citizens, parents, employers, and employees, and whereas Catholic Schools Week is an annual celebration of Catholic education in the United States and an opportunity to recognize the importance, the value, and the contributions of Catholic education to the community and to our nation. The theme for 2023 is Faith, Excellence, Service. And whereas the mission of St. Anthony Catholic School is to provide a high quality education that emphasizes the formation of moral values and commitment to community service. And whereas St. Anthony Catholic School strives to provide a comprehensive and challenging academic program and to foster the spiritual, intellectual, emotional, social, and physical growth of its students while respecting and supporting individual abilities. And whereas St. Anthony Catholic School is committed to reaching out to all children regardless of heritage, religion, race, or economic status, and has made this commitment part of their mission, now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Florence, the City of Florence proclaims January 29 through February 4, 2023, as Catholic Schools Week, and commends St. Anthony Catholic School for their contribution to the education and formation of the youth in our community. Resolved this ninth day of January 2023, approved as the form by James Peterson, James, James Peterson, City Attorney, attested by Casey Moore, Municipal Clerk, and signed by our Mayor, Teresa Myers Irvin. And at this time, I'd ask. Please come forward. Yes, thank you. I'll ask that the representative and the class please come forward. You can bring them all, because they would do a photo of them. Bring them all, they can find. <laughs> City Council and the City of Rock, we want to commend uh, St. Anthony and our principal of St. Anthony Catholic School, Christine Guillermo. Thank you for being here with us. And this is the resolution uh, in recognition of Catholic Schools Week. To all of you young people, thank you for what you do. Keep it up because we all have our eyes on Madam Mayor and the City Council members, I want to thank you for recognizing St. Anthony Catholic School during and in conjunction with our Catholic Schools Week. I have a few teachers that were able to join us today. If I could please have our teachers stand. They are the reason that we can talk about what we talked about in the resolution today. They make it come to fruition. L. Thomas, Denise Spivey, Dan Spivey, and Mrs. Mazek, Kathleen Mazek. We also have some parents that without their constant support and generosity and time, um, we would not be doing what we do so well. I have two students that would like to speak on behalf of our school, Tristan Woodall and Christopher Davis.
Good afternoon. My name is Tristan Woodall, and I am a 7th grade student at St. Anthony Catholic School here in Florence. On behalf of our entire school, I would like to say thank you to the Mayor and City Council for this resolution honoring our great school here today. Please let me take a minute to share with you what makes St. Anthony Catholic School such a spe special place for all of us. I believe the best thing about our school is our principal and teachers. They always look after us and want to make our lives better. They are always guiding us to be better people. Our principals and teachers listen to our opinions and assist us in any way they can. They are always willing to help out after school or any time we need help. Our school changes people for the better. They treat each of us as a special gift from God, starting when we step out of our cars in the morning until the end of the day. I know our school has really changed the way I look at things. St. Anthony makes me feel that I will be something more than I am, or greater than I am right now. I can say from a personal note that they have cared about my family and I over the past few years, and they have done just about everything possible to help us. I want to say thank you here today. Thank you for allowing me to speak today, and this is what makes my school special. Thank you, and you're welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Christopher Davis, and I am also a seventh grade student at St. Anthony Catholic School. On behalf of our principal, Mrs. Galemo, and everyone at our school, I would like to thank Mayor Teresa myers Urban and everyone on the Florence City Council for honoring our school today. Catholic Schools Week is important to many schools across the entire nation, and ours is no different. It is a week we use each school year to recognize what makes our school special, and it means a great deal to us all. I would like to speak about some of the things that make St. Anthony so special. We have a great team of teachers and staff that give us many opportunities to excel in all of our grade levels. Our principal, Mrs. Galemo, is very involved and puts great effort into further developing our school. Our school focuses on ensuring we understand what it means to be part of the Florence community. We do food drives and many other charity events throughout the school year to help people in the Florence area. The mission of our school is strongly based upon these four pillars, faith, family, knowledge, and service. Faith and knowledge go hand in hand because each day we learn to excel in subjects such as math, history, English, and many more. But we also learn about our faith and how we can further strengthen it. We also see our Florence community as a family so we do different service acts just to try and give back a little what the community has given us. Thank you again for recognizing our school today and allowing me to share with you some of the great things about St. Anthony Catholic School. Thank you. I'd like to say thank you, especially to the young people who spoke so well. And so I think your school should be very proud of how you represented them here today. Thank you. We appreciate it. And at this time, we'll move forward on our agenda. And we have next is appearance before council. And we'll give the um, children the time to be able to exit there. Yeah, that one. Um, we can ask. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. mm
at this time, I want to see, um, we have one individual who signed up to job here before council. Each person who gives notice to speak is limited to five minutes and presentation at this discretion of the presiding officer of the city of Florence code ordinance number 2-4H. So at this time, we have Mr. Damien Akane Akun. Is he here? Mr. Damien? Mr. Damien? Mr. Damien is not here at this time. So at this time, we will move forward with our agenda. Next, we have ordinance in position, bill number 2022-37, and this for a second reading. It's an ordinance to amend the design guidelines for the downtown Florence, South Carolina, and the unified development ordinance. Do you have a motion? So Do we have a second? second? There's a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed like sign. <coughs> Next, we have Bill Number 2022-38 for a second reading. It's an ordinance to annex and zone commercial general three parcels located at 401 and 409 and 411 Pamlico Highway. And this particular ordinance is identified as Points County Tax Map Parcel Number 90109-02-002, 90109-01-003, and Parcels Number 9108-05-001. And as you may see, the applicant has requested that we defer this, so that item will be deferred. Next, we have <coughs> Bill Number 2022-39 for a second reading. It's an ordinance to annex and zone general residential RG2, the former Palms Golf Course, identified as the portion of Florence County Tax Map Parcel Number 00751-01-049. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. We have a motion in the second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Next, we have Bill Number 2022-40 for a second reading. It's an ordinance to declare portions of the Florence County Tax Map Parcel Number 90078-01-006, specifically a 30-foot by 339-foot portion along the southern port property line as surplus and authorize the transfers of land to Joseph and Molly Roberts for the purpose of combining with the Florence County tax parcel number 90078-01-005. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those sitting who are in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Next we have introduction of ordinance and the first Bill is Bill number 2023-01 for first reading. It's an ordinance to annex and zone NC 6 6 part 1 parcel at 925 West Sumter Street, Florence County, tax map parcel number 90060-07-002. Do, do we have a motion? Move. Second. We have a motion second. We'll hear from Mr. Moore at this time. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. This is an annexation of uh, tax map number 90060-07-002. And this is what uh, we often call a donut hole. Uh, the, the property owner has requested annexation and to um, zone it NC 6.1, which is in compliance with uh, all the adjacent properties. City water and sewer services are currently available. And uh, Planning Commission did recommend this unanimous, unanimously, and that concludes staff report. All right. Do we have any questions of Mr. Moore? Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying all aye. 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 Okay. Let it reflect the bill has passed. Next, we're at introduction of ordinance bill number 2023-02 for first reading. It is ordinance, an ordinance to annex and zone DS, the lots at 825 South Church Street, Florence County, Texas. Map parcel number 90105-01-007. Do we have a motion? So we'll a second. We have a motion and a second. We'll hear from Mr. Moore at this time. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. This property and uh, the next matter is uh, our two properties that the city of Florence uh, currently or recently purchased. Uh, with this parcel, uh, it is located on South Church Street. And we are requesting uh, zoning designation of destination select use. 
and city services are available to this property, and that includes staff report. Do we have any discussion? Any question? Here, none. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed, like sign. The bill has passed first reading. Next, we have bill number 2023-03 for first reading. It is an ordinance annexing zone OSR, the lots at 833 South Church Street, Florence County, tax map partial number 90105-01-018. Do we have a motion? So so second. second. We have a motion and a second. At this time, we hear from Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mayor. Members of Council. This is the second property, 833 South Church Street. Uh, the city is requesting open space uh, zoning designation for this property. We will use this uh, to extend our landscape gateway into, uh, into Florence. We currently own, uh, you can kind of see it there, just south a little triangular piece of property that is uh, landscape. We will continue that into this property. Uh, after after annexation and that concludes staff's report all right is there any discussion uh, chair recognizes councilman on behalf of council and the community thank you <laughs> to, for recognizing the need and, and taking action to uh enhance and beautify that corridor and uh, this, this it is a um the work on the corridors as you know uh Clint, is such a critical piece and to and that is a very prominent uh entryway into the uh, church street Barringer street corridor so i'm excited to see that you were going to say something uh, yeah this is in partnership with the bruce and lee foundation as well so this fantastic is, yeah i want to say that um bruce and lee foundation one of the members actually reached out to him and asked me that that property came available would we as a city be interested in having that property? And of course, you know, I told them that we would. I spoke with our city manager. So once again, thank you to the foundation because that represents, again, partnership. And also having that area there cleaned up and also having that to be a beautiful green space to introduce you as you're coming to closer to the city of Florence. And I hope with that, that that will also start the continuous beautification of the corridor. And as well, while we own there, we do have some other city property along the area that we as a city that we're working on cleaning up and beautifying as well. So once again, to the partners, thank you for all that you do to help this city continue to grow and be a better place to live. So at that time, with that statement that we had that, um, did we carry our motion yet? Okay. If all that's complete, we'll move on to our next bill and our bill. So we didn't carry. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing no discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed, like sign. Next, we have bill number 2023 04 for first reading. Do, and it's honest to abandon a sewer line and easement located on South Cashel Drive. Florence County tax map parcel number 001-01-159. Do we have a motion? Second. Second. We have a motion in second. We'll hear from Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. Uh, this request has been made by the property owner. Uh, this property here uh, is uh, located in front of Del May. Uh, that fronts Cashua Drive. Uh, if you drive by it, they've recently done some pretty significant grading work, and with that have exposed some of the infrastructure there. Uh, the property owner does own the property just to the left of this as well, and uh, I believe in an effort to make the properties a little bit more marketable, they are requesting us to abandon our easement and line. Uh, the developer of that property will uh, remove the sewer line and uh, take it back to the, the property line. So they will continue to have access to sewer and water, uh, but the easement will no longer run through the middle of that property. And I'll take you to a plat showing uh, generally where that uh, easement is located, uh, which is kind of hashed out here in a, a red, and they will take it back to the property line uh, and stop it there for future access uh, and allow for a little bit more flexibility as to how they develop the property. And Mr. Moore, I do want to be 
clear that these particular, this sewer line and everything that was placed there was placed there by the property owner. So it's not any occur occurrence of cost to the city because it was done. So if we're abandoning the right away sewer line, it won't affect the city. This is property that belongs to this particular owner, and he simply accesses the right now to remove that that's and receive his development. That's he recognizes it currently serves no, no uh, purpose. No one is connected to that. All right. Thank you. Quick question, is that property in the city or is it outside the city? It's in the city. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or discussion? The staff, I'm sorry. Chair recognizes council. Is there a staff recommendation to approve this one? Yes, sir. All right. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, like sign. Let it reflect that bill has carried. Next, we have bill number 2023-05 for first read. It's an ordinance to abandon this Cedar Florence interest in right of way located on Power Road Street on north side of Florence County tax parcel, map parcel number 00147-01-072. Do we have a motion? So moved. So, yeah. Yeah. so we have a motion in a second. At this time, we'll hear from Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is in partnership with the school district. Uh, many of you have seen the uh, demolition and the work currently going on at this property where they will be building the new North Vista Elementary School. Uh, they are, they have requested this to better accommodate the driveway and student drop off uh, that they are proposing. And so um, I will go to that portion. And uh, we have notified all the adjacent property owners. Uh, this is a very small minor street that uh, does not have any access to it. It simply kind of loops around. You can see uh, existing Power Street here, and then it loops around to Fraser and Light Street. Access will still be granted through Fraser, uh, but the <coughs> ownership of that right of way will be transferred over to the school district, and it will become a part of their par larger parcel. Any questions or discussions? <coughs> Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. And opposed like sign. Let it put that the bill has passed. And as we enter to our introduction of ordinance, we've already addressed items A and B. And then resolution number 2023-03 is a resolution and conditional grant and development agreement to provide an incentive for the development of a new housing within the North Forest as a part of the ongoing neighborhood revitalization or redevelopment project, but this item will be discussed in the executive session. Next, we have reports to council. <coughs> we'll call for Mr. Davis to go through the appointments to boards and commission. Thank you, Madam Mayor and members of council. We have four boards of commissions that have vacancies. Our first board is our Memorial Stadium Commission. There is one vacancy there. We have an applicant, Mr. Robert Pridgen, uh, and that falls to Councilman McCall. Um, I'll have to defer to this time. Defer my nomination this time. Next is our Public Safety Citizens Review Board. There's one vacancy. Uh, we have two applicants, David Jones, William Matthews, Jr. That falls to Madam Mayor. I would defer. We have uh, our next board is the board, board of Zoning and Appeals. There's one vacancy on that board. Uh, there are no applicants. That falls to Councilman Smith. I defer it this time. Finally, we have our Design Review Board. There are two vacancies on this board. Uh, applicants must be a commercial general contractor or a person uh, with landscape design experience. We have no applicants uh, and council members. That falls to council member Braddock and Jabay. Starting with Braddock first. Defer. Councilman Jabay. It's hard to vote on nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I defer. <laughs> that concludes staff's report. Thank you. And next we have a report for me as the mayor. I just want to and thank, first of all, our city staff for how they responded 
at the Christmas Day would, would occur with our change in our water department area. But thank you to everyone from our city manager throughout to our staff who was out there surveilling and finding out what the issues were and actually being able to get everything back in order. But also I would like to report that what will occur, we will do a debriefing just to see what was done and is there anything that we as a city can do better in the future. So we will be doing a debriefing for that as well. And also while we were out, um, once again acknowledging the fact that the Fonts County Progress, we are still moving forward with the progress of making sure that Envision has everything they need when they prepare to break ground here in May of coming um, this year. And with the Florence Downtown Development Corporation setting upon that board, just acknowledging that if you did not get to see that the fact that they did receive the small town or community grant from T-Mobile. And there's just so many great things going on with the boards that we have here as well. But I just want to say unto you all that things are going well with the city. Progress is still being made across the street at Urban Square because a lot of people are still asking about that. One of the first things you'll probably see occurring there will be the actually uh, parking garage coming out the center down there. And you will be seeing some progress made on Pine Street with the Mr. Jesse Wiles who's looking at doing some townhomes there. I received some information this past week from him. So that project will be moving, moving forward as well. We will have a flats committee actually coming up this month. And one of the things with the flat committee is also the you know major 76 corridor, which leads all the way out to Francis <coughs> Marin. But once we have that flats meeting committee, I will bring you back an update from that particular committee. But for right now, those are the major things that are occurring that we are being a part of, once again. And thank you to the city council for all the support they gave to the city staff when we were going through that process with the change in the water pressure. So that is my update to the council. And if the council has any questions about any of the committees that we serve upon, please let me know. If not, thank you. and. I see um, Councilwoman Moore right there, and um, Mr. Kermit Moore, because they were at the Athletic Hall of Fame banquet I attended this week. So if you hadn't had a chance, I'll encourage y'all to go look and see some of the athletes that was inducted here from Florence. I was very surprised at the history that we have here in Florence. So that completes my report at this time. So next we'll move forward to our committee reports. And our first one we'll have a report from our chair from the Business Development Committee. Chair. Thank you. Uh, the Business Development Committee met on December the 15th of 2022. Uh, attending were uh, Councilman Braddock as well as Councilwoman Barnes, along with our uh, City Manager, Randy Osterman, Clint Moore, and Michael Hemingway. We thank you uh, for staff, as always, for the participation with the uh, committee meetings that we hold. Uh, we went into a number of different items that are currently underway that the city is involved in. Of course, the big thing at that time was the announcement of the Envision uh, prompt, uh, announcement of the construction, the awarding of the new project that's coming. Uh, that is a significant future impact on the city and our PD region. Uh, we did go from that into a discussion about the surface water issues, how are we going to be able to accommodate the needs of that uh, facility, and uh, Mr. Hemingway gave us a very detailed update about the need for us to take our surface water treatment plant, which we were considering, and if I say this incorrectly, Michael, please let me know, we were considering uh, a change to add 5 million gallons per day uh, capacity, but now that we have this new business, coming in their significant demands, we're going to need to do a 10 million gallons per day infrastructure, excuse me, infrastructure and rehabilitation of the existing facility, which is going to be much more extensive uh, and it'll be over a period of time. And uh, as I understand that, uh, Mr. Hemingway, you're going to be spearheading that whole operation. God bless you <laughs> with what you're going to be doing there. Uh, we also then uh, had a conversation about the wastewater uh, management facility and, again, the need for uh, 
improvements and increase in capacity there. Um, we're looking to go from 22 million gallons per day to a 30 million gallons per day capacity. So both of those are representative of the growth that's coming to our community and the development that's of people interested in Florence and we need to be able to provide the water and sewer that these uh, individuals as well as businesses need. We have went into further conversation about the Jeffries Creek Sanitary Sewer Interceptor that is running uh, through Jeffries Creek right now and that as a part of the overall um, sewer plan it's going to be moving we're not moving, it's going to be adding another line that will essentially run down second, the middle of Second Loop Road to help carry wastewater from the west side of town over to the east side of town. So basically from Cashua to Irby, all along Second Loop, uh, the median there is where it will be. And, and is that a five-year uh, look that we're looking at for that, Ms. Anyway? Well, we look forward to the design being completed and starting in on that. Very important. And I know DHEC is going to be very excited once we get that going as well. Thank you for your assistance on that. And then in conjunction with that, also the stormwater. Uh, the stormwater work is currently underway. And a number of uh, streets and uh, neighborhoods throughout our city, uh, and a lot of that is being done along with the same time looking at some of the roads that we're doing through the penny sales tax. So we're trying to address as many of these at the same time as we can. So a lot of improvements are taking place all throughout the city, um, as well as some that were in the investigation phase. The Pennsylvania Area Project is one of them. Um, but then there's the Timrod Park, Cedar and McQueen Street, North Church Street, and Oakland Avenue are all still within the engineering phase of the work to be done. So a lot will be taking place in 2023 along those uh, very important uh, infrastructure projects. We were also updated on several of the development projects going on, Urban Square being one. The demo of the two existing structures is complete, working on the final phase of the voluntary cleanup with SC uh, DHEC, and we have a signed contract for the parking deck, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing that coming out of the ground. Uh, another project, the old motel, has been uh, completed, being torn down. The site work is complete. We also looked at the NB Burriti Street development. There's approximately 18 townhomes coming. We're excited about that. There's also 175 North Dargan Street, a project that was delayed initially because of a shared wall collapse, but that's now um, coming uh, to fruition, and it's going to be composed of the first floor jewelry, store and then two additional floors of apartments with each uh, floor being about 1500 square feet. The Lost Cajun is uh, working on the final inspections that's over on North Oregon. Uh, the NOFA building is uh, underway on uh, West Evans Street and the old theater um, on South Oregon Street there's a request for qualifications will be introduced uh, in 2023 for new uh, a development to see what kind of developer is interested in that old theater. So that's uh, going to be a very exciting new project the city will be involved in. The pharmacy building that is right next to it is not included in the RFQ. Um, one of the things we did talk about is the, a healthy workforce and the ability to get out and get involved. Uh, and is there some formal uh, opportunities for our downtown workforce in particular. And so we asked about a, uh, is there some kind of downtown loop available? And sure enough, Clint to the rescue said, why, of course we have one. And uh, so Clint, uh, if you don't mind, please share with council uh, what the city has uh, come up with uh, as a walking path uh, that people can do on their lunch breaks. Uh, yes, yeah, so we have developed uh, a downtown loop, so to speak. Many, many towns throughout the southeast and other areas have done this as, as well. Uh, we have been able to purchase uh, through a grant uh, sidewalk medallions that mark the distances along with signs to, to show uh, turns and, and, and 
give direction. Uh, between all the streetscape work and working through DOT, we have not been able to uh, install these yet, uh, but this is uh, approximately the plan. Uh, the initially starts out on the corner of Dargan and Evans, uh, works around Baruti, and goes down the longest loop being uh, three and a quarter miles. Uh, goes down Dargan Street, uh, hanging right onto National Cemetery, Cherokee Road, and then up around Timrod Park, up McQueen Street, uh, and then right back around. So we'll have multiple uh, loops for our visitors and uh, folks that work downtown uh, to, to, to do during their lunch break or while they're here on, on weekend visiting. So it's a nice little project that we'll be able to, to start moving forward this year. It's exciting to see the enhancement of all these different pieces coming together to make our downtown more interactive. And, you know, you have the different artwork that's along the pathway as well. So it's going to be a lot of exciting pieces for different um, visitors as well as locals to get involved in. We then um, went to a new business a discussion. Um, we talked about some other projects that uh, we're looking at review of the road projects and all. And then uh, we then talked about the East Palmetto Corridor ad hoc committee members and what we decided on that there would be a maximum of nine members for that committee and there was going to be consultation and that item is for the proposal of those names. That's going to be uh, with regard to item number 10, the appointments uh, that will be coming up uh, further on in our agenda. Uh, the last thing we talked about was the interactive website, and Ms. Moore, if you don't mind sharing that with us so that our community can know about the improvements to our website and the interactive features. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, this is far beyond my capabilities, so I really need to thank Amanda and her team and our consultants on putting this together. Uh, we're currently working with our um, IT consultant to place a quick link here as soon as you pull it up. Uh, but for right now, the, uh, the, the ability to access that is uh, through our Planning, Research, and Development Department, and you can go to Capital Improvements page. Uh, there you will be able to navigate uh, through our Stormwater Master Plan, uh, the Stormwater Infrastructure Improvements, our third pending sales tax projects, and then we'll, of course, add an update as we move along with various <coughs> other projects. Uh, the, the biggest thing and, and certainly something we want to put out to our residents to, uh, to get feedback from them is the interactive portion of this. And so uh, there is on the website, you can go click on that link. And here is what is called a story map. It is developed through our uh, GIS system. And this will kind of take you through the various stages of, uh, of what infrastructure improvement is, what a master plan is, and uh, just help educate and, and, and give updates on the projects that, that we are doing. One of the largest things, and we hope that folks um, get involved in this uh, more and more, and this is something that we'll present when we have public meetings this year, is the interactive portion where you can uh, click on this link and uh, report an incident. So if you have standing water in your front yard or at your place of business, have a concern, you can go on here, report that, and it helps us collect the data and make uh, decisions and recommendations moving forward. Yeah, that, that would have been real helpful <laughs> about three weeks ago. <laughs> Thank you very much. And that's, unless there's anything further from the other members of that committee. There. Oh. On the homepage, we actually Amanda, have Amanda, would you come forward so you can um, see it, please? <laughs> yes, sir. On the homepage, if you go down to um, scroll down, there's news and highlights, and we've also added a button for capital improvements. So you're at, well, that, that'll give immediate access to that same information. Thank you, Amanda. We appreciate it. Does that conclude? I don't think there's anything further at this time. Yeah, so that's the conclusion of the Business Development Committee uh, report. Thank you. Thank you for that. And also, I'll encourage our public to go to our cityofforms.com. All the information that you heard 
will be on that site, even to the things with our stormwater, the history of that and where we're at. You can always find that also in our minutes. So anything you heard today, you can go to our site and pull it and pull it from our minutes and you'll see the costs associated with these projects and the things we're trying to do. But next we'll have our report from our Community Development Committee Chair. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, Shaquez McCall and uh, LaShondra Neesmith um, are members of this board, of this committee, I'm sorry, and don't have really much to report today. However, I do have a question. Um, we have been um, question with um, something that I wanted to ask Randy, so I'll ask it and you can respond um, if, if, if you can. Um, there, were, there is some concern for elderly people or even people who don't do social media. Um, how can we uh, make sure that the information that's needed will get to them in, in times of an, em an emergency. Sure, this came up during the, uh, the water issue a few weeks ago. Uh, as uh, I don't know if I can stand here today and answer that question fully. What I can tell you is as we work through our after action review and we have this, this critique or follow up that it will, will be identified as, as one of the issues uh, and we will try to develop a, a methodology to, uh, to reach out to those people that uh, uh, we, are, we are missing. So, right. I don't have a, a, a way to say this is what we're going to do. It's, it's something that's got to be re researched and, uh, and studied. Councilwoman, I do want to add to that. Some of the things that has been done in the past with the issues that I would tell our citizens to that when we do the news media, so that's going to be one source. So when we look at that, one of the things that might occur with that, so if we have our press release and if you have something that's happening early that we did social media, but in conjunction to that, a press release can go out at that time. That way the TV media, also the press and the radio media will have that. And so while we're looking at the, the briefing, we can look at making sure that a press release goes out sooner in the process and then in the process looking at when would be the good time to put that out. So when we do social media alerts, do a press release as well. And that's gonna hit that, but then we can also look at other things. And thank you, Randy, and thank you for the debriefing that's going to occur to address this. And, and so we thank you um, um, for that, just really to let everyone know that they, even, you know, all of our people are being considered. We are not just saying um, one group of people, just to let you know that council and staff, the mayor, all are, are on board with trying to uh, make sure all of our citizens are reached. That's all. Unless anything else, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, at this time, we have a report from the Marketing and Public Relationship Committee, Chair. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, and I guess this has really been the hot topic uh, because this came up in our uh, Marketing and Public Relations Committee meeting. Um, and in that meeting, we have Councilman Smith. Uh, we had this meeting actually December the 21st. And uh, Councilman Smith, uh, Miss Amanda, and Hannah Davis was in attendance. And our biggest question with the city, of course, is um, Jabelli. I'm sorry, Miss Jabelli. How did I miss you, Jabelli? I'm sorry. So uh, all, all of us in, in this meeting, and one of the questions I asked was the, uh, what are the needs uh, for the city of Florence? And the question really was given out, the answer really was given out public information. Um, so that is a hot topic. Um, my referral was an app, a City of Florence app. Um, I brought this up and we had some discussion and of course it's a matter of budgeting, you know, uh, getting this out because I heard it cost some money. Uh, but I know being proactive um, and letting our customers, our visitors and our residents know what's going on inside our city uh, where we can or they can uh, respond or react in a early amount of time is, is key. Uh, we always want to engage our citizens in the decision making process. Um, my whole motive behind this was possibly our water bowl advisories. 
this is something we can send out to our residents in an early manner, let them know they need to pour water. Well, this happened on Christmas, where if we had this in place, we could send out mass texts uh, to let them know, hey, temperatures are getting below freezing. Let's, you know, turn the faucets on to a little drip. <coughs> well, I was out of town at the time when this happened, and we were at the beach. My mom's daycare, her pipes bust, so it was 27 pipes burst in her daycare. We weren't here. We were out of town, but we had to get it fixed. And I'm thinking, had we known this in advance, we could have left some water running, and it could have saved a lot of businesses, a lot of headache, time, money, uh, and all of that. So I really think um, in line with our core values, especially when it talks about ownership and ensuring that we uh, make sure that we're giving our uh, residents and taking personal responsibility to be engaged, innovative, accountable, and receptive in the completion of tasks and assignments. Um, I do feel like we do need to utilize proactive means to provide timely, effective, and fiscally responsible municipal services to elevate the quality of life. That's our mission statement. So if we're gonna do that, let's move towards in a tool, which is um, everybody has a smartphone. So leveraging that tool to engage our voters and our residents is going to be key to getting out this information. Um, Amanda, uh, you want to come talk about some things we kind of talked about or some research you guys done into, um, and it may not be an app, but at least a way to send mass communications and be a little bit more proactive with our residents. And I'm just going to ask um, Amanda, could you please limit the presentation to two to three minutes? Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Our research is in the very early stages, but we are looking at some other mechanisms to possibly enhance communications with the public. Certainly, um, the issue with water over Christmas um, brought that to everyone's attention. We were sharing on social media and with the press, and every, every one of those posts on um, social media were also sent to television, print, and radio. So we, we do make an effort um, to get the word out, but there certainly are some gaps. We're looking at a tool, and there are several different companies that offer this technology. CityBot is one that I have actually set in on a meeting uh, with, but there are others like ClickFix um, is the name of another uh, company that offers that same technology. But it's basically, um, there's different platforms, there's um, web um, able to chat through the web, there's able to ch chat through text, but it's an automated system that basically has questions, you build it, um, it either, if the bot is able to um, direct that person or give an answer, it does. If it's not, it directs it to different places on our social media, or on our website that offers um, that information in a little more detail. Um, so there is a lot of opportunity out there through a platform such as that. You would also have push notifications or text alerts, which I think that's what you're talking about. Your company did it over Christmas, mm -hmm. where you're able to push that information. Um, and it does come in handy. The city did have an app probably about 10 years ago for a period of time. And um, the push notifications were, were helpful. Um, so we are doing some research, hope to have something soon that I can present to the committee and they can move back to you. Thank you, Amanda. So um, in conclusion, just uh, let everybody know that this is something that we are aware of, we want to work on. And even when it comes to the website, um, I looked at City of uh, Charleston, City of Columbia, City of Greenville, who has apps. And they engage their residents. Um, they're able to take pictures of potholes, uh, upload it for that data um, that you guys were talking about as well. So that actually happens and seems like we can get it all together with a proactive app, sounds like it. So that concludes my report uh, in the uh, Marketing and Public Relations Committee. And it was my first meeting, so it was fun. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Madam Chair. Next, we will have a report on the Finance Audit and Budget Committee. From that chair, please. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, I chair this committee along with uh, Councilman Smith and also Councilman Braddock. Uh, we met on December 28th, a uh, couple of days after Christmas. Um, in our meeting, we, uh, we had a discussion with our 
uh, external auditor. He gave us a preliminary report. Um, it's my understanding that he will be here next month to give us a full detailed report. Um, but based on uh, his preliminary report, we did um, recommend that the council do approve the uh, audit. But I guess as we, after we get the full blown, um, well, you all get the full blown uh, detailed version, we can kind of go that again. Um, secondly, we went over, we discussed the uh, the opioid settlement and again, how much the city of Florence uh, is to receive. Um, and we're in the process, like staff is in the process now of getting the application process together um, for people to actually uh, request those funds whenever we get them. Um, and then lastly, we discussed, uh, uh, well, staff presented a, an investment policy uh, for us to review and we will uh, review it and give a recommendation for uh, that investment policy uh, at our next meeting uh, held on February 13th, 2023. And that'll conclude our report this time. Thank you, Chairperson. At this time, that concludes the committee reports. And next item is the appointments to the East Florence Gateway Study Committee. Madam Mayor, I'd like to make a motion yes, to sir. establish the East Palmetto Corridor Ad Hoc Committee um, with the following. Uh, City Councilman George Bailey is chairman. City Councilman Chippa Smith is Vice Chair, State Representative Terry Alexander, County Councilman Wayne Mumford, County Councilman William Schofield, Ex Officio Kermit Moore as President of the East Florence Community Association, Holly Beaumier, Executive Director of the Florence CVB Convention and Bureau's Visitors Bureau, Josilia Williams, Member, City of Florence Parks Commission, and Mindy Taylor, Chair, City of Florence Resiliency Committee, and Duke Energy. I second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I do have a question on now. Did not the committee base get established in November and we will vote again? What was the base voted upon in November? What was that in November? What was the, I guess I would have to ask our city attorney. With the November meeting, when they voted, what was voted upon? It was, you had a co-chair and so forth. What was November? Because now we are appointing different. So are we redoing the committee? Is, what, is that what I, is, you want to do, council? That you're redoing the committee makeup? As, a, as what I understood at that point, Madam Mayor, you said that we would have to reestablish. The members of that board. So you're supposed to vote on your members. So, but the members was how many? It was three at that time, correct? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. that in last. November, we said if we voted on it, and then we would have to vote on the members again in December, in the deferred in December. What was the makeup in December? The, the makeup wasn't detailed at the vote in December. It was to establish the committee, and the only two um, members talked about on it were the two co chairs. Okay, so we voted on the two co-chairs. We did vote on that. Yeah, it's my recollection we voted on the two co-chairs. Who were the co-chairs at that time? I think it was um, Mayor Pro Tem and uh, Mr. Moore, Kermit Moore. Okay. okay, so Madam Mayor. So, um, so we had the two co-chairs, Pro Tem and Moore. Those was the committee. Um, members, was that the only thing? Yeah. We we can certainly pull up a copy of the minutes from that November meeting and make sure exactly what the action taken yeah, was. I, but that's my recollection, and I would not suggest that we rely on my memory. Okay. Because <laughs> I was going to say that that meeting and that particular vote, I know. Had a long, a long process of it. Madam so Mayor. yeah, let's pull, let's pull those um, minutes. Madam Mayor, one moment, one moment. I will recognize you in one moment because I want to get this clear because I've had those here before we proceed. So if you pull those minutes, so you can um, clarify for us, and then I'll take your question after they. Well, no, I, no, ma'am. I didn't want a question. I just want to make a motion here. Um, I, I was to make a motion that we discuss this in the executive session. Uh, for the legal issue and legal purpose of it. Well, there's no legal issue, legal purpose. If you want to um, go for one of the reasons, what what do we say here, Jim? Because we don't have the minutes up here. Oh, we, oh the minutes is in. If you pull your electronic thing, your minutes are in there. 
your minutes are in your packet. That's why I was asking him to do, do that. But um, if you want to, Jim, they want to do executive session. What would the motion need to be based Can on for? Can I second your motion? No, I, I need to get it for my attorney to clear legal base for us to do it. Because whenever you go into executive session, you have to have a legal base. So, Jim, what would that legal base? Well, if, if you want to seek legal advice on the status of where you are, mm -hmm. seeking legal advice is one of the specific allowed um, discussions in executive session. So and that was my understanding of what Councilman mm -hmm. Smith was asking for. So you can motion to do that. So legal advice. Right, that, that's, that's what I said. I just want to make a motion to discuss this in the executive session for legal advice. No, second. And we have a motion and a second already on the floor. Um, is Council Member Brady willing to withdraw his motion? I, I don't believe it's a withdrawal. Yeah, you, you wouldn't need to withdraw the motion you on would. the floor. This is a motion to seek legal advice before voting on the motion that's pending okay. Correct. on All the right. floor. All right, and so but doing that legal advice, what we need to do is have the minutes from the November members' meetings pulled. So we know. Them. And if you would, when you get on, y'all, please print out that section so each one of the council members will have a, access to it. All right, thank you. Okay, so we have a motion in the second that the item 10, appointments to the East Florence Gateway Study Committee, be received in executive session for the purpose of legal advice, correct? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 So this item will go into executive session for legal advice. Okay. Next we have mere appointment to the flex committee. At this time, I will be appointing Councilwoman LaShonda Neesmith Jackson to the flex committee. Next, we have our executive session items, and the first one would be for negotiation incidents to propose contractual matter based upon 30-4-782. Item B, to receive an update on legal matters 30-4-782, and then personnel matter 30-4-781, and then we'll have the appointment to the East Forest Gateway Committee study to receive a legal advice and that will also come under the item of 30 4 70 Do we have a motion to go into the second second? Do we have a second? second? We have a motion and a second and discussion here none. We can go to it that and we can take a five to ten minute bathroom break for those who need it. <laughs> you go. Back from the second session. Scotty, they're ready for us. Are they ready? Yeah. All right. We are back from executive session at which time no actions and no vote were taken. So we will proceed back to our agenda with our agenda items. The first agenda item was an item for negotiation an incident to propose a contractual matter, which was resolution number 20. 23-30, it was a resolution and conditional grant and development agreement to provide an incentive for the development of new housing in North Florence as a part of the ongoing neighborhood redevelopment project. So moved. We have a motion in a second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 In opposed like sign. Next, we did have um, receive an update on a legal matter which no action or vote were taken. And we also received information for a personnel matter and at this time in relation to that personnel matter I would like to reappoint our judicial committee consisting of the chair will be um, Councilman Chakras McCall and previously we had and I will ask the following if they were um, considered to serve um, Councilman Braddock, would you serve on that? Yes, okay. And last but not least, I would ask that we have a representative, Councilwoman Neesmith Jackson, would you serve on that judicial committee? Yes. Okay. Having established those three to serve on that committee, at this time, when they are actually together, they will be looking at 
the request for information for the position of a city attorney, either for being a city staffer or either being a contractual servant. So that would be the item that the Judicial Committee will be working on. Um, we were asked that the city staff go ahead and open up that to public um, solicitation of her request for information effective immediately. And are there any other discussion and other questions? Hearing none, I entertain them. Well, we got one more item. Item number 10, which was the appointments to the East Morris Gateway Study Committee. At this time, we'll go back to, we had a motion on the floor from Councilman Braddock. Councilman Braddock, would you please read that motion again to refresh everyone? Motion to establish East Palmetto Corridor Ad Hoc Committee with the following. City Councilman George DeBailey as Chairman, City Councilman Chippa Smith, Vice Chair, State Representative Terry Alexander, County Councilman Wayman Montford, County Councilman William Schofield, Ex officio Kermit Moore as President of the East Florence Community Association, Holly Beaumier as Executive Director of Florence CVB, Josia Williams, Member City of Florence Parks Commission, and Mindy Taylor, Chair, City of Florence Resiliency Committee, and Duke Energy. And we had a second on that, correct? I think. Second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we have any discussions, any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And opposed like sign. Let it show that the East Florence Corridor Gateway Study has been established as a ad hoc committee that we report to council. And if there's another discussion, we can entertain a motion to adjourn. So, 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 so. 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 so.